Welcome back to 60 Minutes. Yetta Jacobs thought she'd found love online. The 67-year-old grandmother from Western Australia flew to South Africa to start a new relationship with a man who was nearly 40 years younger. But within days of meeting her online love, she was dead. And for nearly a year, that man, Jesse Amoko, has been on the run. Until now. In a country of 170 million people, tracking down a moko was going to be near impossible. But Nigeria's specially formed Ford unit, the EFCC, made it a top priority after receiving a phone call from the West Australian Ford Squad. They said that they're looking for a Nigerian called Jesse Omoku, who has been uh, perpetrating uh, a romance scam on an Australian citizen, Yeti Jacobs, and they believe that he must have scammed her uh, in excess of $90,000, and they suspect that he has a hand in her debt. What did you think when you heard about this case? Uh, we've never seen a situation where they would see uh, the person scammed and at the end, he killed her. So it was quite of a kind of an old story and that we have to look into. Abdul Chikol is a lead investigator with the fraud unit in Lagos. He says Amoko matches the scammer's profile. University educated, with good English and computer skills, they work together in highly organised criminal syndicates. This morning, we're given an opportunity to see how these gangs operate. The target is a suspected scam syndicate operating on the outskirts of Lagos. PMF, your people have to cover the entrances. That's all. Okay. We can take off. Let's go. We strike just before 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> It's chaos inside the house. Step out, everybody, step out, step out. Come here. Come step out. out, everybody, get down, flat, 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 flat. After partying late into Saturday night, it's clear this was the last thing any of these fraudsters were expecting. This one is drunk. She's drunk. Lie down. Come on, bro. Why are you wasting time? Come here. Police seize computers and phones, all tools of the trade. Searching the compound, they find expensive clothes, watches, and cars. You're a student, right? And you use a Porsche. How did you afford that? Answer me. Talk! Nine men have been picked up in this raid this morning. Just look at how many phones they had between them. But this is how these scams often operate. They work as a team. Every time Yetta Jacobs logged onto her computer, she thought she was talking to Jesse Amoko. But it could have been anyone. It could have been one of these guys. As the rest of the neighbourhood wakes, the scammers are taken away. But not before giving up the location of the gang's ringleaders. So now it's a race to reach their boss's home before anyone can tip them off. Stop. Stand up. Stand up, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I don't scan. You can check the computer. You don't scan. Sit down now. You know, it's a business for you, but you ruin people's lives. I don't scan, please. You don't scan. Nobody asked so you. So why was it that the first thing off. you picked to hide was your laptop? Why didn't you quickly remove your watch to hide your watch or hide yourself under the bed? Why the laptop? Wait, where's the laptop? There's no laptop. This is a car key. Have you ever thought about the victims of scams? The poor people who send their money to 
men like you? I don't know. You don't give I them don't, much thought? I don't, I don't collect money from people. We've recovered millions and millions of dollars, which were returned to the victims. So many of these fosters were prosecuted and convicted. And that could well be the fate for Jesse Amoko. On the 28th of January this year, after a 12-month manhunt, he was arrested. The man who had fleeced Yetta Jacobs of $90,000 and is suspected of murdering her was finally in custody. Abdul Chakol has agreed to allow 60 minutes to record his interview with Amoko. But we're under strict instructions that we're there as observers only. Anything we say could jeopardize the fraud case against him. Can you tell me the countries that you visited? To Republic of South Africa. How many times have you visited South Twice. Africa? Twice. What took you to South Africa? I was there to meet my girlfriend, Chetty Jacobs. It's hard to reconcile that this softly spoken man is the same person who manipulated and destroyed Yetta Jacobs and countless other women. Today is his 29th birthday. So how do you feel today being your birthday? I feel, I don't feel happy at all. I, this is the first birthday I will be celebrating with no one of my family members around. And I be locked in a detention and it's really bad. I don't feel happy at all. We want to believe that someone's accountable for what happened that day. Because I believe he did it. I really do. Bula and Lorna know they have a fight ahead of them. If they're ever to see justice for their mother, Yetta Jacobs, whose only mistake was to give her heart to a callous con man. What do you feel you've lost? I've lost a mum who, you, there's no replacement. Someone who brought us up, cared for us, showed us the values she believed in. You, Lorna? Your mum? What else can you say? While Amoko is now in custody for defrauding Yetta, it's up to South African authorities to pursue the murder charge. But shoddy police work in Johannesburg and a four-year backlog for toxicology results mean Amoko is unlikely to be charged with murder any time soon, if ever. Do you fear that there will be no resolution with this case? My fear is that as time goes on, it will lose significance. Um, so, I, you know, I, I would like to see that the, the toxicology is done a lot quicker. Um, and all we can do is keep um, pressing for that, you know, because the longer it does go on, I think, yes, um, it will drop off the radar. Mm. And there is a chance that perhaps someone could get away with murder. Absolutely, yes, that's right.